All right, guys, welcome to Petway Family Farmstead. This is the part two of a two-part series on how to build the cleanest chicken watering system available for your meat chickens. Stay tuned. He'll move. She's pointing at our chickens. We've got about four, uh, four future egg layers down there that we're raising wow. along with the meat birds. The um, anyway, if you, this is what uh, this is what we're working on now. I'm showing you the uh, bucket design. Uh, this is we're, we're going to be feeding 10 gallons of water to these feeders. Uh, we've got the bucket design here. I'm going to show you what we did to make this one. Um, I put a valve on mine. You don't have to. Uh, the valves are about three, three and a half dollars a piece, so that's an expense you may not want to do. Um, all you have to do is when you uh, come off with the uh, with the, the flex piping I told you about, if you hold the flex piping higher than the top of the bucket, water won't leak out of it. Um, I put a valve on mine just because I'm going to pull my flex piping off right here and leave it with the coop when I move the chicken tractor, um, but you can leave a tail and pull your flex piping off further down and then just have it higher than your bucket or you can just drain your bucket every time when you move it. It's totally your choice. Uh, like I said, I put a valve on mine. Um, we'll see how it works. All right, I'm um, doing some smaller pipe right now, so just wanted to give you a couple heads up. It's the same, uh, same thing, same concept as what we did uh, putting together the uh, PVC before. Just wanted to show you a couple tips what we're gonna do. And I'm going to put a equipment, a little parts list down in the uh, in the video down below, so you'll be able to see everything below the video. But what we're going to do is take, uh, you've got another half inch nipple here that's threaded on one side, half inch pipe thread, about half inch uh, glue together PVC. Here's the valve, it's glue on on both sides. Coming out the other side. Now, if you notice, this one's a little bit different. Um, this is going to be coming out of the other side of the valve here. This is what I was using before on the other end of the piece that had the chicken nipples. Now, they do the same thing. You've got to get from the pipe to the barb. The hardware store happened to be out of what I needed because um, I'm making several of these for a couple of my different tractors. They didn't have quite enough. So, you know, you can change up what you need if they don't have it. Instead of going, all I did, instead of going uh, this direction, and, you know, we still got the same glue together, uh, PVC. But all I did is instead I just swapped the brass fittings. They're the same on both ends. But I just went male to female. I swapped my male and my female around on the pipe threads. This one has male PVC thread, female brass thread. This one has female PVC, male brass. I just had to swap around what I needed because the hardware store happened to be out of what I had. They didn't have enough of what I needed, so I swapped them around. No big deal. You can do it however you want to do it. All right, another thing that I'm going to change on this one, um, on these smaller ones, I want to keep this as close to the bucket as I can because obviously you don't want it to pull out. This is the piece that I'm going to put into the bucket. I'm going to drill a hole into the bucket, and um, I'll show you all that in a minute. I'm going to drill a hole into the bucket and kind of thread this in the bucket, and I'm going to seal it up with silicone. I want to keep all this as short as I can, less chance of knocking it against something and throwing it out of the bucket for last of better word, lack of better words or tearing it out of the bucket. So instead of leaving the big gaps between the fittings, between all the fittings, like I said, I'm going to keep it as close as I can. If you notice, there's not a lot of gaps. You don't see the pipe in between these fittings. You don't see a lot of extra pipe where I joined everything together. Um, like I did on the bigger pipe down there that I'd shown you. So what I'm going to do here, to get as short a nipple as you have to have to join these together, like I said, I've got to join join these fittings together. And I'm not going to leave a bunch of gap in between them. So to get it as short as you can, not that hard, just want to make sure you get it long enough to seal in both, or decently long enough, so just stick it here. You know, mark it with your finger. It needs to be that long, so, you know, that you can see the little edge. 
That's how deep it's got to go. Okay, so it's got to be that deep. So then let's just mark it twice. Stick the couple in there again and mark it again. So it's got to be that deep. So we'll cut it off. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to sit all the way down. I just want to keep it about as short as I can. If you notice, I primed this one first. Put something on the table because it's kind of hard to hold on to all these hand edge pieces. Now I'm just going to use that piece to measure my next one. Sticking my finger where I want to cut it. Be careful, you don't want to cut your finger, of course. These are kind of sharp. These ones are brand new. Got you give my finger out of the way there. Set something on there. That wind's blowing. I hope that you can hear uh, in the background there with the wind going. It's kind of hard to hold on to these. That's why I went ahead and primed it before I cut it and kept it on the paper. All right, to glue these, this is the way I do it. I just, I stick it on my finger. Some of you guys, my fingers are kind of big, so it doesn't go down very far. But it's kind of hard to glue it and glue it and hold it and glue it. So, you know, I just stick it on my finger to glue it. So what I'm going to do, glue in this piece first. Already got everything primer. So I'll run the glue around it. Run the glue around there with it just sitting on my finger like that. Stick it on there. And it's funny, I told you I used the purple, the purple primer. You can look down in there, it's seated. I use the purple primer because that way I can see where it goes and make sure it's done. My, my oldest son's out there playing around with a chicken tractor. He was cutting grass a minute ago. He's making sure we were using old chicken tractors we picked up off of, uh, it was Craigslist. We found some that we're gonna use. You'll see those later. I bought them off Craigslist cheaper than we can. Uh, my son and I bought them off Craigslist cheaper than we can build them. And uh, he's out there tight, tightening it up, making sure there's no holes left in it and stuff like that. Well, he was laughing that I never use the purple cement when I do stuff. The purple primer, he said, it makes a mess. I don't want to use the purple primer. He always uses the clear primer. And my oldest son, David. So it's just personal preference, whether you want to use the purple or whether you want to use the clear. See, actually, that one's a little bit longer than what I wanted. There's a gap still in there, so it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. Just however you want it. Kevin, uh, Living Traditions, awesome YouTube channel, Kevin and Sarah. Uh, we watch, my wife and I, everybody here on the farmstead watches that channel a lot. Kevin has a good saying for almost everything he builds. Uh, if you're the kind of person that uh, wants something perfect, it goes with us too. If you're the kind of person that wants something perfect and uh, likes everything perfect and square and measurements and all that stuff, it's not gonna work for you. <laughs> it's farmstead perfect. Homestead perfect is what he calls it. Homestead perfect. I drip more with this smaller stuff. That is why I tried to put it on the table and also because of the, I had to put the pieces down. I couldn't prop them up on anything like I did. Like I did the big pieces. So I was using this paper bag to try to keep them clean. Got neighbors cutting grass and a lot of wind, so I don't know if you can hear what I'm saying, but not, I guess we'll have to do a voiceover. All right, I we'll measured that one a little bit better. Don't know what happened with that first one. See how I got the gap totally closed up on that last one. It's got a little bit of a gap on that one. Yeah, we're gonna drill a hole in the bucket now, get ready to put that valve assembly in it. Now we use food grade buckets. These, I actually picked these up at one of the big box stores. I think these came from Home Depot. Uh, we don't drill a hole at the very bottom. I don't know if you noticed that on the last one or not. We leave it about an inch off the bottom. That allows any dirt or debris that gets in there to actually settle down to the bottom. Um, leave it a half inch to an inch off the bottom. Doesn't have to be much. You're gonna be filling these every day with the meat chickens um, once a week sometimes, depending on how often you use them and how, what, how many chickens you're actually feeding. But half inch to an inch off the bottom, they're not gonna get much debris in them. We're gonna have a lid on the top, but that way anything that does get in them doesn't get fed down the lines, doesn't get into the, the nipples and clog them up, or if you get much in there, it might force them to stay open. Highly unlikely, because the stuff will settle out in the bottom of the pipe. Um, these particular buckets, I know because I've used them before, but you can hold them up to the light or the sunshine, 
I happen to know we come up to the bottom of the wording right here and that time I get the hole drilled, that leaves me about three quarters of an inch to an inch off the bottom. Um, if you do the setup just like me, three quarter inch hole saw or three quarter inch paddle bit what a lot of people use my son back there here in the background he and his daughter working on the chicken tractor um three quarter inch hole saw three quarter inch bit is what works perfect for this to slide directly into the bucket a lot of people use that when they make these i don't i use an 11 16 it's one size down uh, so when i go into a bucket i use an 11 16 the reason that i do that is um because i actually thread these into the bucket it's a very tight fit that way might be overkill. I actually have to thread it, turn it into the bucket. To me, it's just less chance of leak. That's just the way I do it. Um, I'm using what's called a step bit or unibit, whatever you want to call it. The 11 sixteenths is actually one step before the end. Um, I don't know if you can see that, the little writing on there. Three quarters, if I were to go all the way through, 11 sixteenths is one step. So I will actually stop right there where my fingernail is. One step before the end. I think it's upside down but as far as looking. But... I would recommend, you can buy these, you can pick these unibits up, you can pick them up in a three pack from Harbor Freight, relatively cheap. Um, they work out real well for plastic or thin metal, sheet metal. Um, but if you just want the cheapest way to do it, pick up a little paddle bit. I thought I had one out here to show you. Paddle bit's just a flat bit. Um, just a flat bit, that's the easiest and the quickest way to do it and the cheapest way to do it. You can pick up a paddle bit from about anywhere. It's just a flat bit, kind of square looking with a little triangle on the end to get through there. I'm going to turn it sideways so y'all can watch here. I'm pushing real slow because it'll eat through there pretty quick through the plastic, and I don't want to go all the way through. All right, one more step to go. All right, that's the last step. All righty. I didn't go all the way through. As you can see, it'll go in, and it's stopping right there. You can see it, there's one more step left. And I did not go through that step. But again, that's just using a step bit. If you have them, that's wonderful. That particular step bit goes up to three quarter. The step bits come in different sizes. The next to last one is the 11 16th one. All right, so we gotta put a little bit of pressure when you do it the way I actually do it to get it started. Clean the hole out. You can do it with a little file if you want, but clean it out. I got a drill bit sitting here, so clean all the extra stuff out of it. Up. Rinse the buckets out good before we use them. It takes some pressure to get it started. And you also have to look at where the threads actually start. If you look, see the thread starts right there, if you can see it. Let's see here. Once I wind it around, thread starting right there. We'll put the pressure in. Are you hear me grunting or not? <laughs> You have to twist it toward the way the thread's going. And there it goes. Once you get it started, it goes in pretty easy. All right, I'm going to hold up right there for a minute, and you'll see why in just a second. All right, guys. We got my caulk done. Put some caulk around it. I'm actually using marine grade caulk because that's what I had handy. You don't have to use marine grade. The um, 
a ring grade seals good and it seals permanent it's made to be underwater all the time you can just use standard silicone standard silicone standard caulk whatever you've got handy all i'm doing is the ring grade is very hard to squeeze out of the tube i can tell you that Marine grade is typically more expensive. So again, it's not something that you necessarily have to use. Teeth in just enough to, uh, insert a nipple in just enough to get it good and start. I screwed it in and screwed it back out. And what I did is just uh, got the caulk and pushed the caulk into the gap. Put it over the threads, pushed it into the gap between the piece here and the bucket. And you'll see what I'm talking about if you build it yourself. And then what I'm going to do now is actually thread the piece in. Like I said, I backed it most of the way back out of the bucket. I just pushed it down to the gap, and now I'm going to thread the piece in. I'm doing that. It's going to carry the caulk in with the threads. It's going to carry it in with the threads. It's also going to squish it out around the edges while it's doing it. Try to get the best seal possible. If you can see it, it's actually gonna wrap it around. See, it's twisting it around. It's getting it smeared good. It's taking it in with the threads. And I'm just gonna continue to do that until it gets all the way in. You don't wanna go 50 miles an hour while screwing it, but if you screw it in, it'll eventually stop. If you're lucky, it'll stop with the valve up on the top. In this particular case, it's getting tight. I'm gonna try it again, it's getting tight, so I'm not worried about it stopping. It's tight enough, I'm just gonna stop right there, the valve's up on the top. Now to make it look a little bit prettier, I got blobs of caulk down there. Oh, by the way, I'm dipping my hand in some water. Usually that'll help keep the silicone from sticking to your finger as much, as long as you don't have silicone in your finger already. I'm dipping it in water, and I'm just gonna bring it. I'm just kind of smearing it around just to make it look a little bit better. I'm not worried about putting it on the inside. Some people say, oh, I don't put that on the inside. It'll get your water going to the chickens. It's going to be a little bit before this goes in. This is fast curing. This is made to be underwater. I've looked it up. It's made to be underwater. Once it gets underwater, it's fast curing. It dries. So therefore, I mean, it doesn't come loose underwater. This may be put on holes of boats. It doesn't deteriorate once it gets submerged underwater. So I'm not worried about it getting in the chicken water. If you're worried about it yourself, don't put it on the inside. I understand different people worry about different things. So I'm just smearing around on the inside a little bit. I need to get a little bit more out to get on the bottom on the insides. And that'll be it. Hey guys, welcome back. Bug right there. Welcome back guys. We are, I'm gonna show you the finished product. Uh, this is in the video that we were doing showing you the horizontal, making the horizontal nipple water system. The video we made, the last step of the process, there was a snafu. It's now gone, lost in La La Land somewhere. So um, don't have that video anymore. So what I'm gonna do is show you the finished product and explain we were almost through with it anyway. So what we got here is two five gallon buckets of water. If you remember me showing you, I'm gonna give you a brief overview here. You remember showing where we put these, uh, the valves, nipples, and the barb on each one of them. I've got them sitting up on a little stand. The stand is not much. It's just a cheap piece of pallet, just cheap pallet we cut up on four two by fours. I am gonna put another stand along the bottom somewhere down in here with another little shelf on it to uh, keep some feed and a couple other little supplies on. Real lightweight and easy to move. Okay, so you heard me talking before about the polyethylene tubing. You'll see it here. This is half inch outside diameter by three eighths inch inside diameter. And the last video as far as we got was um, this brass nipple, we screwed it in. And to here, we did use um, we did use Teflon tape on this joint. 
Um, not necessarily, don't necessarily have to, but we did. Now in the, um, in the equipment list, remember I told you in the last video um, that uh, this is backwards just because the hardware store ran out of them. In the equipment list, this is gonna be a female, bra uh, a female threaded brass, and this is gonna be a male threaded PVC. I'm gonna do that to make it simpler for you guys. What really matters is this brass sticking out, these brass barb threads. So I have coming off of both of these, I have the same piping coming off both these with this fit in here in the middle. The water will automatically level itself. Water self leveling. Both of these, the chickens is, the, the, both are, valves are open, the chickens come down, both of them are about that far down right now. Just checked them a second ago. All right, this fitting right here is a T compression fitting made for this polyethylene pipe, um, half inch outside diameter polyethylene pipe. If you look very carefully, this is a quick connect T is what it's called. If you look very carefully, now I'm gonna try to pull this hose out. If you see that little piece right there is moving, but the hose, it's not pulling out. Neither one of them are, none of the three. But the common denominator is that little outside piece is moving. So let me show you the trick back up here. What we're gonna do when we get ready to move this chicken tractor is we're going to turn these valves off right here. Now, if you don't use the valves like I explained, I'll explain that again here in just a minute. That's about $350, $395 a piece. So you can save seven to $8 not using the valves. And like I mentioned in my earlier video, and I'll show you and tell you how to do that if you want. All right, so all you have to do is hold down that little piece that was moving. Hold it down, just like that. I'm holding it tight. I'm trying to do it where you guys can still see. There we go. Okay, watch, that piece will not move. I'm holding it down tight. I'm pulling this out. It comes right out. It comes right out doing it that way. I want a lot of water to fall out, so what was in the tube. Same thing here, I'm holding it down tight. Pulled it out with my fingers back here. All right, now we are disconnected from the chicken tractor. You can let this dangle if you want. I'll probably get a little bungee and I'll probably hook it up to the door here just because I don't like things dangling around. But for today's sake and for this morning when I moved it and yesterday, I just let it dangle. But you see the mutt down there, she doesn't have any problem trying to grab a hold of stuff that's dangling around. Okay, I'm not gonna do it right now, but what I would do at this particular point, like tomorrow morning, if they're just a little bit low, I'll just add water to them, not even move these drums, not even disconnect anything. But if I'm having to move the tractor, then I have to disconnect. So I disconnect, move the chicken tractor, take the drum, take these off the stand, I move the stand, put them right back up on here. If they're low on water, our water supply is only about 50 feet that way, only because we have a hose stretched out. Our well's actually about 250, 300 feet that way, and we have a lot of hose stretched out. We don't have spigots out here yet. We run hose through our garden, we have Miles of hose stretched out, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing we're getting going to have to do by over the winter. Yeah, That's a winter some, project. Run some water lines <laughs> around here. We have, think we should have stock in hose. But anyway, so let's just pretend we move the chicken tractor. Let's, we move the buckets. We've moved the stand. We're ready to set everything back up. So to hook back up, guys, it's real simple. I'm going to show y'all if you can see it. Maybe on this one. I don't think you can. Now you won't be able to see it. It's gonna show you there's itty bitty marks where the teeth on the inside is. I don't know if you can point on the inside there, Angela. There you go. Look at the end of those, see those slats? There's little bitty pieces of metal. If you go down each one of those little black lines, there's little bitty pieces of metal you can't hardly see at the end. And that's what happens. This plastic goes down inside of there and it grabs. At the end of that, there's metal that grabs once this polyethylene pipe goes through there. So watch, all, I, all you have to do is push it in You'll know it because you push in, it's real easy, and then you'll feel it, and it won't come back out, okay? Same thing over here. Push it in. It's done. It's done deal. When you do put the buckets back up here, as you saw, the pipe has a little bit of memory to it, so just put them in the same position, you know. You don't want to swap them to the other side. It'll work, but then you got to bend the pipes the other way. No sense in doing that. I mentioned before, if you don't want to use the valves, you don't have to. If you didn't, then this polyethylene pipe would come all the way back to here. All you would have is basically this with a hose barb set up, similar to this. Just it would be a little, it would be backwards right here with a hose barb set up, and your polyethylene pipe would come all the way back to here. What you would want to do is you would want this T to be a little bit lower. T 
T would be a little bit further down, and each one of these pieces, you would want to come down about to here. You would want to make sure that each one of your polyethylene pieces coming off of the bucket is long enough to go higher than the bucket. Mm. Remember, water levels itself out. So as long as you get the end of the pipe higher than the level of the bucket, water won't come out. This thing can be full, and if you're holding the end of the spigot up, in, the end of this pipe, which would be this end, but I use a short one because I have a valve. If you used a long one, had the T was all the way down here and held it up to here, you could actually bring the bucket up, take the pipe, shove it inside the bucket, shove it in the whole handle right here, and tote it wherever you wanted to go. And as long as it's higher than the level of the water inside the bucket, you won't lose any water. I just chose to do it this way. Because we'll use these again, mm -hmm. multiple we'll use times. Them again and again. It's just if you want to do it a little cheaper, you can save you eight dollars. If you got to tote it a long way, if you got to stick it in the back of tractors and drive them around, and you don't want to worry about knocking these things off, just something to think about because then you wouldn't have but about this much sticking out of the buckets. Okay. All right, gonna show you one more thing here. This is nothing but a sleeve. I didn't want somebody in the video to think this was plumbing. This look, this is just a PVC sleeve. It's not hooked up on the inside. It's a some of this half inch pipe, and this was a fitting to keep it from falling all the way through. We stuck on here. This pipe, this this just runs through it. The only reason we put that there was so it wouldn't get caught on the sharp edges of this tin and tear my. If you watch, there's no water in this line right now, but the water's still in the manifold in the pipe down in the pipe down there with the nipples. So I'm opening this one. I'm opening this one. If you listen, don't know if you picked that up, but if you can see the water and the bubbles coming through here, and it's coming down through here, and watch it. Here it comes. Here it comes right here. Filling up. All right, guys, I so wanted to show y'all the chickens are definitely drinking out of it. took them really no time to train on this. Um, my theory on why it took them no time to train, this is what they were drinking out of when they were in the brooder. This is red. And again, this is a theory. Uh, a couple other people I watch on YouTube said similar. This is red. The nipples down there were red. They immediately went they to They immediately this. went to it when we put them in here. Go ahead, huh? They weren't even, um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No. They weren't even, uh, there wasn't any water in there, and they immediately started going to them. And we didn't even have the water in there when they when we first put them in the tractor because we were going to, we didn't want to stress them out anymore. And um, so we were going to leave them on the same waters for the first night, first overnight, because it was late one afternoon when we put them in here. And uh, we said, uh, and when, then we said, well, you know, we, we better get water in there. They're going to. They're going to give up. They're going to not think anything's in there. So um, when we first filled it up, with water, so we literally, we left one, one gallon container in there overnight and they drank more out of this water than they did the, the one they'd been drinking out of for the previous four weeks. Because we did wait to the four week mark before we put the, uh, before we put the hens out here, the Cornish cross out here into the chicken tractors. But uh, they seem to love it. This is the cleanest water supply. There's several different ways to do it. But this is what we feel is the cleanest. There's no contamination in the water. There's zero waste, zero drippage. You can see down there where that sleeve's coming in, where the pipe's coming out way back in the back that he was talking about. You can see it back there. And if you remember from the build, there's a plug on this end. And on the other end was another hose barb, just like I showed you. And that's where the tubing's coming in and sticking into the hose barb. I do want to remind you, and this was very important since we missed it on the original. I'm not going to take this back out. But when we first filled this up, we did spray water hose through this, through the line to get anything out of it before we stuck it in here. This is just hanging on simple bailing twine. And hang it however you want in your coop. But take this out when you first hook up, when you first hook up the buckets and you first start flow water through here, through the buckets, take this plug out. If you don't, you have what's called a sealed system. And all that bubbling that you just saw, it's gonna try to fill up this whole two inch pipe that I have here. And the water's not going to go anywhere because the air's got it sealed off. So you'll see water try to trickle in, but it won't go anywhere and it won't work. You've got to pull this plug out. We screwed it in with a pair of pliers right now, a pair of channel locks. So therefore, I can't, I'm not going to unscrew it. If I do, the water will just come rushing out. But leave it unscrewed until water comes pouring out of there. You'll go through probably about five gallons of water just trying to prime the system. That's what I'm priming the system. Once the water comes gushing out, I mean, let it go. You'll, hear, you'll see a couple bubbles, gush, air, some other stuff. Once it comes out steady... Screw it in. Didn't need any Teflon tape. It's plastic on plastic. You screw it in with a pair of pliers and it's ready to go. And ever since then, they hadn't had a problem. Like I said, the one that we were gonna take out because we didn't think they want it, they pick it the one that's broken too. They don't care a bit. They're drinking out of that one too.
So guys, we wanted to thank y'all for, I'm gonna get in here and top the food off. Uh, they seem to like it out here. I wanna thank you guys for following us on this build. Um, it's not the cheapest build out there. It's not expensive. The, um, all together, you know, we've got a couple five gallon buckets. We've got some PVC fittings, some water line, a little bit of PVC pipe. It's not super expensive. Don't have the figures in my head right now. Hadn't sat down and totaled it up, but uh, we're gonna put everything down in the description below. There's easier water systems out there. I hadn't seen a cleaner water system. You know, we feed our birds non-GMO, uh, non-GMO food, they're organic, or organic feed. We want them, there's no hormones, no antibiotics. We're trying to get the cleanest meat we can. Let's give them the cleanest water we can. Clean in, clean out. Uh, even these little one gallon feeders like we had right here. Doesn't matter how many times a day we changed it. They, they got were, dirty. Mm -hmm. They got dirty. And if it was a five gallon water, we've used those before. All of them get dirty. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with any of that. We just know this is the cleanest way that we found to do it. So hope y'all like our page. I hope you will subscribe to our page. Please go down, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification button on the uh, right hand side. Like the video. Like the video, hit the thumbs up. Share this with anybody that you think might like it. And if you hit that bell notification, you will get notified of all of our upcoming videos. And hopefully enjoy we're gonna, your day. Hopefully we're going to start putting them out a couple, three times a week. And comment. We'll answer you back. Ask us any questions you want. Most definitely. This whole water bill, this whole farmstead, it's called the Petway Family Farmstead. You may see my wife and I, Mrs. Petway Family Farmstead, and myself on here more than often. But this is a family. Um, both my sons, my daughter-in-law, my grandbabies, you'll see them. We all pitch in and do this together. We just happen to be in front of the camera more often. They stay a little more active than we are otherwise. But this is a family effort. We love y'all. All of us love y'all. Please come back to see us.